Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, I'm going to get onto the topic of where, in my opinion, is the best place to start if you want to get into the hobby of watch modern. And I'm going to be, I'm basically concentrating on the what is the best base watch to start with, uh, revolving around a few kind of specifications such as the price, the initial price of the watch that you want a mod, and basically how cost effective it is. How what the availability is of modern parts for that watch and also how easy the watch is to mod as a whole. Now just before I get on to that topic, wristwatch check and today I am wearing my, I was going to say little, it's far from little, my Seiko Franken Monster as called because we're all the bolts sticking out the side of the case. Lovely watch, very quirky looking and to be honest quite rare now, don't know why but it just kind of went under the radar for quite a few years and I, I only crept up on it around about a year ago. Lovely watch, the other quirky thing is it's a Seiko 5 Sports but it's also a Diver 200. Lovely. I will be doing a quick review of this watch very, very soon, but today we're going to get onto the topic in question. Where do you start? Now, like I say, there's a lot of kind of avenues you can go down, but this is just my, after I've been in the, the kind of the hobby for this long, this is just my personal opinion of where I would go if I was going to do it again. Now, starting off, it's either going to, the, the biggest three brands are Seiko, Invicta and Vostok for modern. That's, that's just, they are. Seiko, in my personal opinion, is the go-to one to mod. More precisely being the SKX models. So the 009 and the 007, as in these two here, unmodded, modded. You've got absolutely thousands of parts to choose from, which you can put in. A lot of people have a lot of support from. There's a lot of forums, there's a lot of pages, there's a lot of people out there to give you advice on them. The only thing with the SKX now, it seems to be going up in price. I don't know if this is the fact of there's rumours around going it's discontinued, there's going to be replacement with another SKX style watch, which isn't a diver, it's just a Seiko 5, yada yada. However, to even get a second-hand version of one of these watches, you're going to be starting off at around about 150 quid. You might get a bit of a beaten-up one for under that. If you want a new one, you're looking at over £200. And when you're starting out and you're a novice, I know personally I wouldn't want to be spending £200 on a watch, which I'm going to basically get stripped down and put Potentially, I could damage it because it might be my first watch I'm modern. And if, in all honesty, this one was the one I first did, and I actually did mess up the dial originally, and that's why, it, well, it's, it doesn't have the original dial in it. And that was an expensive watch, and that was an expensive mistake for me. I've learned. Now, going down the other route of not so expensive watches, the Invicta. This watch here I picked up second hand for £37. You can actually pick them up brand new when they're on sale for around about £60, £70, £80 pounds off Amazon and so on. Good watch, they share a lot of like sizing of parts with the SKX, so it's got a 28.5mm dial, so the dials are cross compatible, modded dials, etc. etc. Hands are cross compatible because it's got an NH35 movement in it, you can just slot them on. Because it has an NH35 movement as standard, you can leave that one in as an upgrade. The only reason I've changed it in this one is because I needed the day function, but hey ho. Problem with this watch is. The Brandon is absolutely everywhere on the Invicta. Brandon cheapens the watch in my mind, so you have to grind it off. And for a novice, and I know when I first did it, I was absolutely pooing myself when I went at the case with a grinder, or grinding wheel, I should say, or flapping wheel, whatever you use. Because it's, it, you know, you've paid a bit of money for the watch, the case is the biggest part of the watch, it basically houses everything, and it's not too hard to basically slip and mess the case up when you're taking the Invicta logo and basically branding off the watch. You can leave it on, but I think when you're modding one of these, you need to take it off to basically just take that Invicta side away. This watch here is what I personally would start on if I was going around again, and it's what I recommend to people who are starting out in the world of watch modern. And this here started life as a Seiko SNK 809. I'm going to put a picture up of it now, there it is. Nice little military style watch, has a 7S26 movement in it, nice canvas strap, and it's also a very nice size, it's a nice medium watch. 
Now, this one actually is a parts watch I just tied together, and that just shows you how easy these watches are to mod. I literally took the parts and put it together in half hour. They are very easy. The reason why is there's actually not that many parts in. Compared to an SKX, which has the moving bezel, you've got bezel inserts, you've got a screw down crown, etc, etc. This is just a plain, old, standard, nice looking, automatic watch. Now, just to get in, with firstly price point, these, even new, originally started out at £60, £70. You can't get them normally new for that now, they normally go for about £70, £80, but still, compared to the Seiko SKX, that is a fair chunk of money that you would be saving. It also means that you're not going to be sitting looking at the watch going, I'm going to throw £200 down the drain if I do slip. Yes, 80 quid is still 80 quid, but it's better than 200 the other thing is, like I say, this shares basically all the DNA of any other Seiko. The dial is the same size, so 28.5, the hands are the same size, so you can basically swap any mod you can do dial hand-wise, movement-wise, on the SKX you can do on this watch. Now, you also get a lovely viewing window, which in my mind, when you're starting out in watch modern and you're getting into it, you like seeing the movement. And you get that as standard with the SNK. This one's been upgraded with a sapphire crystal, hence why it's got a little bit of a blue tinge to it and it doesn't have any Seiko branding on it. But you're basically getting, in a lot of people's eyes, an upgrade to start with. Now, continuing on with the movement, like I say, these basically come out of the factory like the SKXs with a 7S26 movement in. And yet again, biggest upgrade you can do with these watches is putting an NH36-35 movement in. When you come to do that with one of these babies, there's a slight issue. These movements come with a movement holder, which basically sits on the outside of the movement. And what this does is it holds the movement steady in the watch, but the case back of the watch pushes up against the movement to basically put a bit of force on it to keep it stationary. It pushes it up against the front of the case. The SKX comes with a 4mm spacer. The NH3635 movements as a whole come with a 3mm spacer, so you have to partially dismantle the movement to fit the spacer that comes on the 7S26 in the SKX, which means removing the date, date wheels, removing the spacer, the original one out the NH36, and replacing it with the one out of the Seiko SKX. And you have to do the same procedure on the 7S26 movement as well. So you're basically semi dismantling two movements to fit this movement in an SKX case. Bring back my little SNK here. This movement, as standard, comes with a 3mm spacer. So this movement here, this NH35, will just directly fit into this case without any modification if you're either using a plain dial without a day date or just a date window. If you want to use a day date you will have to change the day wheel because that will be slightly out of sync going from obviously a 3 o'clock crown which these are set at to a 4, however the date function no matter if it's at 4 or 3 will line up which yet again is a lot simpler of a mod than the SKX if you want to fit one of these movements. The other advantage, the crown. The crown on the SNKs is actually threaded. So this is on a threaded stem. If I bring an SKX crown here, this is actually riveted onto the stem. You can't get these off easily. What you have to do is basically pay maybe a lot of aftermarket crowns around about £20 for an aftermarket crown. You can also get them with a pre-cut um, stem and stuff, but it just adds to the price. You, you could pay 30 quid for a crown. Adds to the price of the watch. However, with this, you just basically put this in a pair of needle nose, um, in a needle nose vice, or pin vice, I should say, Unscrew that crown off there, get your new stem, size it up, which don't get me wrong is a bit tricky, thread it on with a bit of thread lock and it goes straight back on so you don't have to pay for a crown, yet another saving. Dials, like I said, because you're using an NH36 movement, you can basically use any dial out of any Seiko or any mod for a Seiko watch in this. As you can see here, I'm using the a nice wavy dial here, which <coughs> originally was for an SKX. Hands are the same, because you're using the NH35 movement. 
any hands that will fit in an SKX will fit into this watch. If you don't like the see-through back, for example, an SKX back will fit straight onto the SNK. It's got the same thread form inside it. So if you don't want to see that and you want, you know, a nice little fish back on the back of there, you can do it. It's that versatile, but it is simple. This is the simplest watch in my mind to mod. It's also the most versatile when it comes to wearing. Because of the size, it fits on basically anybody's wrist. The SKX is a big watch. And for some people, it does sit quite big on the wrist. So they might want to get into watch modern. However, this watch is too big. The SNK, however, is a nice mid-sized watch which will suit a lot of wrist sizes. It's also a watch that will fit under a suit, so you can use it as basically a dress watch if you wanted, whereas the SKX is a bit bulky for that function. That's the reason I built this one for, was for a wedding so I could wear it underneath my suit. And that's basically where why I like this watch. It's so versatile, it's so easy to mod and it's cheap. Let's just do a quick sum up of what's on this one here. Let's buy a brand new watch for, for let's say 80 quid. We buy a movement, 30 quid, 110. We buy the dial, 25 quid, that's 130. 15 quid for the hands. If we leave the crystals in, that's 150 quid for a fully, basically brand new watch. If I was to do that with the SKX, I would be at least paying that just for the watch itself before I even got into modern the parts. And as soon as I start modern the parts, such as the dial, the movement, I'm going to be getting on to around about 200, 220 pounds, which is then the price of a brand new SKX. And that's why, personally, I think the SNK is the best watch to cut your teeth on if you want to get into watch modern. And in all honesty, I have got literally, look, there's one case, there's two cases. I've got literally cases for SNKs which I just mess around with day in and day out. They're very easy to mod. And that's where I was So going. anyway, hopefully I'll start somebody out in the world of watch modern by that. Um, I'm going to leave it there because I've ranted on for long enough. Um, I hope this video has been very informative to you. As always, keep safe and I shall see you soon. Also, don't forget to subscribe for a lot more videos such as this one.